Okay, here we go. Yeah, uh, firstly, um, Johanna, I was just... Uh, one of the things that you're involved with is basically simplifying things, trying to cut down on labelling or, or trying to make it as specific as possible. Obviously, tomorrow we've got the impact of Brexit on uh, the uh, seafood industry. It's 9.40 with Andrew Oliver, uh, Andrew Oliver. But for you as well, I mean, obviously we're looking at the prospect uh, also of changing all our labelling potentially as we come out of the EU. I mean, in, in itself, the fact that we're going to have to, what we put on, how we label up fish, even on, you know, boxes of fish, that potentially could be completely change, could it not? Um, well, I think the plan at the moment is to keep the rules the same as what they are now. Um, I think if there are to be any changes, there would be consultation, there would be, um, you know, that discussion with industry. Um, as far as I'm aware, there's no plans to make any changes at the moment. Hallelujah. Yeah, good. <laughs> I mean, e even with the, the blue flag with all the stars, you know, I mean, <laughs> that's on a lot of products. It just, I mean, it's mind boggling what potentially, but as you say, if we can keep it the same, mm. that's got to be good news. I mean, th there'll be a few, there'll be one change um, that I can think of in particular, but that's for the EU health certification mark. Um, and that's simply removing the EU from the oval, but the Food Standards Agency have had two consultations out recently consulting on that. Um, but in terms of what needs to be on the label, the items on the label, I, I, I can't see yeah. that. Great. Yeah. The battery number will not change. Sorry. The battery number? Yeah. yeah. Would the factory number change? Um, I'm not too sure. Do you know that one, Ivan? Yeah, the, the plans are to keep everything the same as much as possible, to keep things as simple as possible. So there has been, as Anna, Hannah said, a consultation on that particular health mark, the identification mark. And as far as I can see, all they want to do is remove the EU and everything else will stay the same. OK. Uh, any more? Alan, are you... Yep. Yeah. Ian's poised. Um, but uh, uh, like the rest of your life, you're just born poised, aren't you? There you go. And uh, um, Ivan as well. I was just wondering, I was quite intrigued by the fact that obviously Australia and, and USA, zero tariffs, and then India and Turkey, uh, 30%. Um, I mean, India and Turkey, has that always traditionally been that high, or is it some of these more recent and, and what might have actually uh, spurred them on in the first place? Um, I... I don't really know the, the full history of these tariffs, but it has to do with, um, you know, the Americans always want free trade, enterprise, all this kind of stuff. Whereas some of the poorer countries, they tend to be much more protectionist because, you know, they, they just don't have the money and, and they want to keep everything within the country. Particularly because I looked on that, but of the EU band, it was sort of 10 to 15 percent, something like that for the UK. But they're obviously going to, we're charging a tariff as they come into this country. Yeah, the UK would charge yeah. that same tariff. Yeah, there you go. Oh, right. Thank you very much. Um, so, assume we have a no deal, so we crash out, and we then go to MFN status, given we're in the WTO. What's your experience of how long it takes to negotiate, develop, and finalise trade agreements around the world? And do you think we have the experience to do that? And what role will Seafish play? Deep breath. There you go. <laughs> right. Three questions. Um, <laughs> I, I have been following um, trade negotiations. Uh, Europe has been conducting them, and they take a ridiculously long time. I think two years was the record, was the shortest one. But there are trade agreements that have been in the making for decades. Um, so it takes a long time. On the other hand, it is the EU, and they have to keep consulting with 28 countries. So maybe that does stretch it out a little bit. So hopefully the UK will be a little bit quicker than that. Um, do the UK have the people to do it? Well, you would think they do. They're already consulting on a free trade agreement with Australia, with the United States, with New Zealand, with the, I can't remember what it's called, CPTPP, the, the Pacific State Agreement. Um, so they're already on with it. So, okay, I hope that they, they do have the negotiators that can do it. Uh, 
Anyone else while we're here? Um, and Hannah, just in your time where you've been involved with this, how much have you, have you seen things change quite dramatically over the, the, the last year or two as far as the regulations involved? Has it, has it, I know you're trying to simplify things, but do you actually think there is um, a requirement for that, that people are looking for that as well, uh, you know, in the powers that be? Um, do you mean from an industry perspective? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, think, I think all businesses want proportionate and simple regulation. And I think that's largely the role of us as the regulation team. We speak to industry, we understand what the issues are, uh, we'll try to understand what the issues are, and we try to work with government to try and make sure that any new regulation or changes to regulation are as proportionate as possible to, to reduce that red tape. Um, and obviously certainty is a thing for business as well. So if we can provide that, that that's kind of the reasoning a lot behind the guides that we produce, the newsletters that we produce, is to try and provide industry with as much certainty as we can. Okay. Uh, are we done? Um, we're going to uh, reconvene uh, here later on at uh, six. Seven. Sorry, seven o'clock, seven o'clock for drinks. Uh, then it's, yeah, it says uh, entertainment, Nigel Barton. So uh, he's going to check out his dressing up box uh, and see what he can come up with. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you very much uh, indeed. Uh, Ivan and Hannah, very much, and Malcolm Frog, of course, uh, overseeing it all as well. Uh, and you're going to be around later on so we can have a, uh, yeah, there'll be lots of little uh, whisperings in your shell like ears. Um, but uh, you. A couple of hours at the moment to relax and then we'll come back uh, and then we've got lots of opportunity for networking uh, and trying some fine uh, sea uh, food later on. So uh, thank you very much. Got to go and do it. Do it now. We'll be back uh, in a couple of hours time. Thank you very much. <laughs>